Hi, welcome to Model Railroad University's course number 102 on wiring. We're going to build on what you learned last time with the crossover switch. Now you can really see the X uh, green wires that are crossing over. My power feeds are yellow. Uh, yellow and blue, and we're going to apply that. We're going to make our railroad operate a little bit better because we know how to use that switch, and we're going to use it to wire up the tortoise. The first thing we need to do is to build a tester. Now, I just took a, a soap container from Walmart and uh, some wires and some clips that I got at the electronics store, and we'll show you those here. Got some clips on one end that comes out here, the inside, we'll look back at that again, and I have the crossover switch that we wired, this time the power going in, the two side connections, are coming in through a connector for a 9-volt battery. And you can get that at electronic supply houses, or if you're lucky enough to still have a Radio Shack like we are, you can get them from Radio Shack. I just drilled the case and mounted up. Now, the two wires that came out after my crossover, those, um, what did I have? So I'm using gray and black wires to my clips. And once I have that wired up, now I have it set up on a switch that goes center, clicks down, centers off, up this way is the other way. So the first thing I would suggest that you do is to take this, and we're going to clip it on the outside connection here, and on the outside connection there. Get it down here. You can see now we're going to watch this black piece right here. And there we go. And that's what I was going to say is the first thing you need to do. First thing you need to do is build this tester because this always test them before you go to all the work to wire them up. We'll set that out of the way for a minute. Now, I like to use number 20 or 22 wire, and either one really does not go through these holes, these mounting holes in the tortoise very well. Okay, so I'm back. What I've done is I've soldered all these tandem actually, except for one, and I wanted to show you what I'm going to do with that. So we'll get you up close and personal here. I'm going to take my um, strippers, automatic strippers, and if you notice the orange wire, I have a long piece. You can see by my finger here, that's a long piece that's stripped off. And there's a reason for that. I'll show you just in a second. I'm going to strip off a whole bunch of that. Now, I'm not going to just pull this part that I just stripped off. I'm going to start twisting that rather hard and aggressively. Because what I want to do is use that insulation, we'll pull it out a little bit further, and I'm going to twist it some more. And I want that to stay really tight together. There we go. I have that wire now nice and tightly twisted. And the All right, so we're going to get this guy up at the temperature. We've got some fresh solder on there. And then we're going to just draw that along and draw that solder into that wire. And I want the whole wire tinned all the way out to the tip. If there's any excess, I'll just flip it off. Okay, so we've got all the wires tinned, and we're looking pretty good. Put that back in my caddy, put this back over here, out of the way. All right, now I, my next problem is that my holes in the tortoise switch machine are just a little bit too small. They will not, and let's go here and show you, they will not allow my wire under normal circumstances to go there, but it's close. So what I have is an 045 drill, real small one. This one happens to be a number 56 if you're looking for it in, in the stores. Now, I am not going to drill this from the front side here where the insulation is because I'm liable to have that spiral bit grab a hold and just rip it right off of that um, front. But if I drill it from the back, the spiral tends to pull it in. So let's drill them all out from the back. Okay, so those are all drilled out. Now let's take a look at that same green wire. We'll easily, hopefully, shove right through, and that's what I want to do. So my next task then is to take my pliers from the rack, and I'm going to bend this over to the left. I came in in the fourth notch, and I want to touch the fifth. Those two um, contacts are in the middle. And in one second, I'm going to show you why, or tell you why, I did this. Because uh, 
You've probably heard me say it before several times, but when someone else has a good idea, the best thing you can do is, to put it politely, borrow it. Actually, I make no qualms about it. I steal it. Let's put a weight on this so it can't go anywhere. Makes it a little more sturdy. Okay, so now I'm going to solder that. Now, you might ask yourself, well, why are you purposely shorting those two together? And if you remember from the last course that we did, 101 wiring, we talked about on this switch, what I really have is two of my single pole switches, one on one side, one on the other. And that's no different with this tortoise. The only difference is, is that the two commons, let me get a pointer if I can here, the two commons are this time in the center. They're not built like the, the switch here, but they are built in terms of contacts the same way. So this contact over here, four, will contact two or three, and contact uh, five will contact six or seven. All right, so my old friend Tony Kester came up with this idea, and I have to I fully admit it, like I say, I stole it from him. Uh, he even wrote about it in the magazine so anybody can read about it and find out. But each one of those contact sets, the one on the left, the one on the right, is, gr is graded for or rated at one amp capability. So if you get a short on your railroad when you're powering your frog with these switches and you get a, f a, f a short that goes over one amp, you are probably going to burn out the contacts in the tourist switch machine. It won't burn out the motor, the motor still work, but the switch will not provide power to your frogs anymore. So what Tony came up with is the idea of, well, if each one's rated at one amp, let's put the two of them together and we'll get two amps. And that's what he does. So my first green wire, remember I talked about it, it's always indicated that it goes to the frog. That's what I use for frog wires. Oops. So the green wire is going across and contacting four and five. Now my next wire that I want to put in is going to be, yeah, let's go with the orange one. And we're going to put the orange one in then on contact three. But there I'm missing the, the green contact here. You can see the green is kind of in the center there. I've come through the three. And what I'm going to do now is take my pliers and I'm going to grab that and I'm giving myself that much space out from the, th from the board. See if I can get my finger out of the way here. And I'm going to bend that over. So it's now in front of all of my contacts. It, it has space there. I'm going to come back over here. Three goes to seven. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to put my pliers right in line with contact seven and bend that back. And then I'm going to take my cutters and I'm going to give myself a little bit of a cheat. I'm going to cut some of that off. Now, what I'm going to do now is take that and run it back in to the contact for seven. So what I have here, as you can see, is I have space. I've come through three, across, and back into seven. And that's pretty much locked up. Now I tried not to let it go back behind here too much. I don't want any wires getting behind there and making contacts. So let's take our solder again, and we're gonna solder those together. Right there, now we're gonna do the brown. Okay, well we've already gone out with the brown, so let's do something different. This time if I put the brown in contact two, I'm gonna bend it up, okay? And I'm gonna come get as sharp a bend as I can, so I'll help it with the pliers. So I'm gonna do that same thing. I'm gonna put my pliers above the board, bend it over, and that only goes to contact five. So if I put my pliers right there in line with number five and bend that down. Now the next thing I want to do is look it over and make sure that I have good contact on all those. They're all soldered. Nothing is touching up here and nothing is touching on the one down here. So I'm jumper, jumping over between two and six and three and seven. Now that goes through there. Hold it in place with the weight and solder it. Nice little cone. And we got the gray wire ready. Do that. Okay. 
Now, what I have here is the gray on eight, black on one. I have two is the brown coming over to six, and the orange coming in on three, going over to seven. Now, I have a problem in the fact that one and eight stick way out. They're sticking way too far in front. So that's a hazard. That can be a short. So we snip those off. And there we are ready to go. I have my frog wire ready to hook up. I have one wire off for the north and the south rails. And I have my black and uh, black and gray wires that I can hook up then to the motor. So everything on this tortoise is ready to go electrically. Now let's take a look at what we have to do mechanically. What they give you, what Steve, the guy that's at Circuitron, gives you is this little 025 wire. Now to me, that's just a little bit too light. So what I have here is an 039 wire. It's much thicker, it's stiffer, and it will reach further up without bending so much. Now he also gives you the fulcrum, and I believe I've already, yeah, I've drilled this one out so it fits the 039. When I mount mine up, what I do is I slide it in this way so that my tab is down and comes in. That way it can be as high as it possibly can be without interfering. Steve gives you a bending diagram and I suggest that you go by it in the instructions. I've bent so many of them that I don't really pay any attention to it. So I grab that guy, I bend him, and he's a little too much, so we come back. We come out here about three quarters of an inch is what he recommends and do that. Now, the only thing that's critical here is that I have 90 degrees between this part of the wire and this end. This is not so critical. What I'm going to do now, this is a really long wire, but what I do is I run that up through my turnout. Sorry for that. And then I trim it afterwards. Put that in place, that's not bad. I've lost some of these, so I went to the screw dealer hardware store and I bought some the extra turnout. Okay, so let's take our tester again. It's still hooked up, ready to go. Hopefully I haven't shorted everything in under the creation here. Let's uh, strip these so we can do them. I want to make sure my electricity is going through the actual circuit for the machine. So we'll strip the black and gray. That's the ones for the motor. One and eight. And we'll hook up my leads to those. All right, now you can watch it here. Uh, let's get you up close so you can see. There's, uh, there's the motor. Let's do it the other way. And there it goes. And it's going to full come over. So not bad. It's working. Now, the last thing that I do to prepare this to mount it under the railroad is to set what I call this throw bar to neutral. In other words, right in the center. So we're just going to click a little bit, let it run, and a little bit more, and a little bit more. That's the advantage of this tester box, is I can sit there with the switch, and I can click it until it's dead even. You're not supposed to push it with your fingers, so you're better off to do it with a uh, power. You go to Walmart and get yourself a soap dish or whatever else you can find and make up the little tester. Because we use it, we've used it twice already. I'm going to use it again in the next episode when I actually mount this tortoise machine under the layout. So far we're doing great. I hope you come back for episode 103 uh, on how to actually mount the tortoises. We'll see you then. In the meantime, have a great time model railroading.